Hi, Hi, guys. So, uh, we are Digital Pay Craft, and I am Sandeep Sundaram, the CTO of Digital Pay Craft. So, let us see what is the agenda for today's session. Mr. Main as well. which is basically an API gateway company. Apigee is currently part of the Google Cloud. While working with Apigee, we found out that there are certain areas of gap which we can address, particularly around developer engagement, uh, how do uh, a developer... seven years of existence, we have worked with uh, 50 plus enterprise CPA programs. We have helped uh, various banks enable their open banking platform in our uh, one API marketplace solution. We have uh, uh, also uh, paired up with Google to come up with their Firebase healthcare solution. Uh, we have built over 30 plus uh, uh, API marketplaces for various customers that we have. We have a very strong developer uh, Sandbox, which essentially virtualizes your API. So you onboard your API onto our system. It is completely transactional. Uh, it is fully transactional, and as well as it will capture. Internal API ecosystem. Yeah, so, uh, when we are talking about an internal API ecosystem, you will have developers within your company, and uh, at any point of time, there will be multiple API programs going on within the company. So, if I ask a CIO a question, how many API programs are running within your company, or are you really reusing? Most of the time, we are getting it. Yeah, that's the answer we are getting. It. So, you know, to address that little gap, we have come up with our solution, which is the one API hub.
able to add your pre-existing APIs onto this. the specification come in. Now, this is not a regulation. This is more of a specification. So, that is the concept here. Can be created uh, and it can be solution that is uh, how does DAG play a role Atable, right? So right, oh guys, so I am just pulling out. Our one API market.
So this is the default view of our one API marketplace. So you have got uh, a home page when you are landing on. Uh, you know, uh, this is uh, essentially fully customizable. Then uh, the vanilla look and feel of our marketplace. A developer who is coming. So there is the assist by developer in creating this application. And this is the market. That is the objective. So that's the key to work on the self marketplace. We have this waste fire something in the world. It's a first time. A first time. Yeah, yeah. So last time. Oops. <laughs> yeah, you have to switch it off. No, no, no. You must switch it off. Right. So, yeah, sorry about that, uh, you know, slight disturbance, but yeah, we are back on order. So, uh, as I was mentioning, we have got these fire samples uh, uh, for uh, all, all sort of uh, resources that you can think of. Yeah? So, uh, our developer will first come in, the developer will be able to study what is the conformance layer. Next thing, the developer will be able to study what are the various payloads uh, the developer should be sending out. And the final part is that the developer is creating a sample application. Yeah, so this is a, a, an application that you can create in our system. So you will be essentially creating an app. App has got a consumer key and a secret. 
Yeah, and then the app has got certain other mandatory fields. For example, if you're familiar with uh, open authentication, uh, we will be able to set up a redirect URL, etc. here. So once you've created uh, this sort of stuff, the most important part comes here, which is the API documentation. So you'll go into the API documentation. First step is to set the uh, authentication. Right, so you create, you select your app, you will be uh, getting the API key and secret, you select the scopes. So these are certain scopes which says that, uh, you know, uh, by using this API, how far you can go. Yeah, can, I, can you read, can you write, can you delete, etc. All of these are defined by scopes. So you authorize, you are authorized and then you can start playing around. So you click try out and you go down. Now this is a bulk data use case. So essentially all the bulk data which is stored in, uh, all the allergy tolerance that is stored will be stored here. Yeah, so there you can, there you go. So all the response has come. And this is, this response is coming from our sandbox. So uh, you can try out here. Once you are happy, once you are happy with what you see, you will be able to go to your uh, system like a, a Android or an iOS application you'll be able to invoke this and get a response for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are two elements to that. Yeah, so when you as a consumer comes to us, comes to delay pay craft, there is a sandbox that we can provide without any change. You can just give it to you as is. Yes, you don't have to do any work. You can just expose it right away and you can onboard your developers onto this. Once your developers are onboarded, they will be able to play around, they will be able to create their apps. Yeah, so parallelly, we will be able to engage with your team to provide the production mapping, right? So the, for the production mapping again, there will be EHR records. The EHR records will have to be mapped onto Firestore. So that is going to be sort of a consulting operation. We'll be providing consulting service. We don't provide a size service. We'll be able to provide the consulting service to move the data onto the Firestore. And then uh, it is just a matter of flipping your URL to production. That's about it. All right, guys. So with that, I have come to the end of uh, my healthcare uh, demo. Now let's go back to my presentation. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, banking. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the banking regulations. Now the banking regulation I want to talk about today is open banking. Now open banking is a de facto standard in the Europe for uh, exposing your banking information. Yeah, so any bank, uh, it, is, uh, it is a regulation that all the banks in the Europe has to be compliant with it. And by being compliant, what you're doing is you're exposing individual account data, individual payment information, fund and open data to anyone who is interested. Of course, there is a process where you sign up. There is also a very involved process of collecting the content, uh, consent of the account owner. Now, I'll be showing all these details as we go along. Yeah. So uh, this just provides a brief about the amount of APIs that you are expected to expose if you are to be compliant with open banking. Now open banking uses OAuth2 consent flow. So I will be covering that as well as we go along. Now let us see what solution we are providing as digital API craft for this. Yeah, so we are again providing a API marketplace for open banking. So API marketplace is a place where all these, uh, you know, all, all these API specifications are listed. Now, when you look at open banking, there are specifications starting from 312 through 310, yeah, 310 rather. That is where we are standing. So we are compliant with all these specifications. Now there will be some bank which is only compliant with 316, but it will have a branch which is compliant or a, or a partner bank which will be compliant with 319. We can simultaneously support all these versions in a single strategic portal. We are also providing a sandbox. Now again, sandbox is a regulatory requirement. So this sandbox is where we provide all your transactional data. So as a, dev a developer who is coming onto the open banking scene, will be first able to create a app and be able to create their application by connecting onto our sandbox. Yep, so let me move on. 
Now, this is a very high level view of how things come together. Yeah. So, a developer is coming onto the platform. The first thing they, they do is to develop onto the developer portal. Yeah, they will be registering onto the developer portal. Once they are registered, there will be an approval workflow that will be triggered. There will be certain data has to be exchanged. All of that will come out of the box in our system. Uh, and then they will be able to see which are the sandbox APIs that we are providing. Yeah, so they will be able to try out all the sandbox API using our internal tryout mechanism. I'll be covering that in my next uh, demo. And uh, further down, this will be connected to our sandbox. Our sandbox, as I mentioned before, is completely transactional. So all the events that you are performing on the sandbox will be reflected in your next invocation. Yeah, so our sandbox has got an API exposure layer, a consent management layer, which is the most important part of open banking, and a microservices layer where the business logic will read. Yeah, so once you have tried out with the developer portal, you can go back to your development environment. You can directly connect to the sandbox. Yeah, so you can directly connect to the sandbox. Uh, can complete your POC. Once your POC is completed, you will be able to go sign up a, uh, a deal with the bank, and then switch over to the production. Now, the deal signing, the you know, the discussion with bank is essentially an offline process. It can also be done completely through our portal as well, depending upon the choice that the developer makes. Now, let's move on to a demo. So uh, let's uh, it's back onto my portal. Right, that's my portal. So in my solutions, I've got banking and healthcare. I've already covered healthcare. I'm going to get into banking. So in banking, yeah, so this is essentially the landing page. So you will be able to list your third-party applications. Yeah, so third-party applications will be essentially the application that you create by using the open banking APIs. Open banking APIs are here. So I have listed three major open banking APIs, uh, four bank major open banking APIs. I'll be covering the account part today. So when you click on an API tile, you'll be getting onto an API view, right? So this is a free flow text that you can enter that describes what your API is doing. Yeah, so uh, creation of this tile can be done with the help of, uh, uh, creation of this tile can be done with the help of a manual process. It can also be done with the help of a CI CD process. So uh, there are versioning available here. You will be able to flip through various versions and see what is in an earlier version of this. Right, and finally, you can move on to the end point. It's taking a few minutes to load. I don't, there you go. So uh, I've loaded the account swagger. Now, when we are coming onto the account swagger, uh, you guys can see the very familiar swagger UI where all the APIs are listed. Uh, we also provide a different view of this using our, our own inbuilt Dapper. So Dapper is also a Swagger viewer yeah, with some uh, cooler feature. For example, we have a three-panel layout for seeing all your API. As, as against uh, Swagger, which is a single-panel layout, we are providing a three-panel layout. We are also providing various SDK samples, uh, uh, which essentially are the code snippets that can be created for uh, you know, various uh, programming language of your choice. Right, so let me go back to my Swagger view. Now, uh, let us understand how open banking works. Yeah, open banking is a rather involved process, and uh, since it is dealing with the bank account of an individual, there are multiple steps of uh, uh, authentication that is happening here. So the first step of authentication is the TPP authentication. Yeah, so third party authentication. Third party can be an application developer who is coming into the system. So first, they are getting a consent to get the user's information. So in order to get the consent for user information, you need to provide your client ID and secret. Let me just uh, pull out uh, client ID and secret. client ID, that's my secret, and I click on authorize. 
there you go so the authorization is successful now uh, the first step here is to acquire a consent so in order to acquire a consent yeah you know you have to first send an api call so right need to click on try out first so first you need to get a consent so the consent date has to be some date in the future so i'm simply going to change the dates here and i'm going to execute so when you are executing this, you can see that what is going on. Yeah, it's essentially a curl representation of it. And here comes the response. So what has happened is that a consent ID has been generated. Yeah, so this consent ID is very important. You take the consent ID and then you move on to the next stage, which is the user authorization. So I'm going to minimize this. And I'm going to get into the user authorization. In the user authorization, you are providing the consent ID. Now, let us take a small pause here and understand what we have done so far. Yeah. So in the first step, what you did is that an app is first authorizing itself to access open banking information. In the second step, the app is authorizing or getting the authorization from the account holder to access the data. So I'm going to click on the authorize and then you are redirected to a consent management app. Now this consent management app will be hosted by the bank. Yeah. So right now I'm simply going to show our vanilla consent management app. But the whole idea of this is that this will be hosted by the bank. So if it is a city bank, you will see the city bank logo, etc. here. So I'm going to enter the username and password. So this is the username and password of an account holder. So typically, when we are talking about banking bank accounts, right? So there will be a uh, there will be an involved process of OTP as well. So we have simulated the OTP process. You are essentially authenticating. That is the first step. Yeah. So you. Continue. Now this uh, user has got two uh, bank accounts. So, you know, within the same bank, there are two accounts. So this uh, user is providing consent for the third party application to access both accounts. Yeah, so that is what this means. So you proceed from here. And that's it, guys. So the authentication is successful. So I hope, um, you know, you're, you're following me so far, right? So the owner of the bank account has provided the consent to a third party application to access the information of that bank account right so consent has been provided now what is a consent here consent is essentially a bearer token under the OAuth specification so i'll show you the bearer token now here the app is invoking the account api call now account api call is part of the open banking specification so, and there are, these are all uh, um, optional fields. I'm not going to enter any. I'm simply going to execute. So when you are executing, you can see the important part, which is a bearer token that has been passed. And this is the response. Yeah. So as a user, uh, consent was given to access two accounts. So the details of both accounts are available here. Yeah, plus some, um, you know, uh, if you are available with uh, uh, the concept of, you know, next step, next step, etc. HEDOS it is called. So HEDOS is the standard that has been followed here. So, uh, so that concludes my demo about open banking, guys. So let's move back to my presentation. I don't. Now let us see how we can bring all of these ideas together, innovate and create something new out of this. Yeah? So in order to facilitate innovation, we have come up with the concept of innovation hub. Yeah? So innovation hub is a place where um, you can bring together all your APIs. Now these APIs might be residing in different API gateways. You can use our connector framework to bring together all the APIs onto one single API catalog. Uh, you will be able to use our API sandbox to invoke this, try it out, 
next step is the innovation hub. Innovation hub is the place where you will be able to collaboratively design new APIs. Finally, we have the API Studio and API Dapper, which are the technical elements that will help you in your journey as you go along. Now let us see uh, certain trends, uh, right? So um, we can see the concept of workspaces coming in, right? So workspace is a collaborative area where more than one member can come in and start designing their API specification. So we have followed the same concept here. We have, uh, we'll be able to create a hub, uh, sorry, create a workspace. Onto the workspace, you will be adding multiple APIs, you will be adding multiple team members, and you will be collaboratively developing your new API specification. Once the API specification is designed, you will be able to launch a sandbox right away. You will be able to try out what is happening within the system. And once all of this is done, you will be able to start building your runtime. Yeah, so what we are providing is a facility for you to try out your API without even creating your runtime. So with that in context, let's move on to the demo. So let's go back to the DAC One API marketplace. Move on to my account. And first step is I create innovation lab, which essentially is creating a workspace. So I'm gonna name it my workshop. Lab. So here you have an option to choose a logo, you know, so if you are collaborating with an external company, you can certainly create, a, 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 you know, a logo of that company here. And you continue, this is the step where you are selecting your API. Now, innovation, as you know, guys, is not a standalone activity. Innovation has to be always done on top of existing items. Yeah. So here we are bringing together the banking APIs, yeah, various healthcare APIs. Maybe you might have some third-party APIs. All of them will be brought together onto a single platform. So I'm going to select the two APIs that we spoke spoke of today. And next step is where you will be able to add your collaborators. Now I'm not going to do that today. Uh, I'm going to finish it. Of course, you can always come back to this and add your collaborators. Right. So as we have created it, yeah. so if you go to your dashboard, you can see that the Innovation Lab is available and we are already automatically placed inside the Innovation Lab. Now, the first tab of Innovation Lab is Connector. Now, what is a connector? It essentially, uh, uh, a connector essentially are the APIs that you have added onto this. Yeah, so as you saw, I added uh, two APIs, banking accounts, yeah, and health check. Now, these have come from two different API gateways. Just for the clarity of it, I have mentioned Apigee and MuleSoft here. So the uh, APIs have come from multiple API gateways. I have automatically generated the content secret. Yeah, so you will be able to download the Swagger file of this. You will be able to see them. You will be even able to launch a Postman and uh, study your uh, you know api in, uh, uh, in in a postman environment yeah so as you know postman is becoming a default standard these days for uh, uh, you know testing out your api so we have just followed the same bandwagon right there you go so the account has been uh, imported here you will be able to study you know how the consent management works etc cetera, etc cetera. all of them will come here Let's get back. So you have added your pre-existing set of APIs. Next step, of course, you can see who are the team members. You will be able to invite new team members onto this uh, as and when needed. The next part is the collaboration part. Now, collaboration is the most important part of any innovation. So in order to collaborate, we are providing certain attributes. First thing is a message board. Message board is where you know, uh, an owner or a team member will be able to provide certain, uh, you know, the details. Welcome to. All right, so let us collaborate and then we can add a text here. 
Yeah, so uh, this has been added. Now, uh, someone who is coming in next will be able to see this. They will be able to add more comments onto this. Yeah, so this will be an area where they will be able to add multiple message boards, right? So uh, once the welcome message is done, perhaps the next one will be, you know, uh, introductions, you know, those sort of things. Finally, it will be like, you know, what are the new ideas that I'm talking about? Yeah, you know, what are the new things that are happening in the, uh, uh, in, in the market? You know, how can we use all of them? All of these can be put down in a message board. And message board is a cool way uh, to, you know, communicate with your team. Next thing is the to-do list. Now, to-do list, as you know, this is where all your activities live. Now, we have created a simple project management view here. We can also integrate with uh, Jira or any of the project management tools that you already have. So uh, let me add a task. Identify Epix. Yeah, so. There you go. So it is created. When you create it, it will be automatically in to-do status, which can be further moved along onto various uh, different stages as we are moving along with that. So again, I want to uh, stress that we can definitely integrate with any project management tool. So this is an area. This is not exactly a project management tool I am uh, proposing here. right? So what I am proposing here is a collaborative environment. So in order to collaborate, first you have to communicate with each other. Next, you have to identify your task. And finally, you should be able to do the technical activity as well. So in order to perform your API technical design, we have come up with the concept of API Studio. So API Studio is a, is a technical platform where you will be able to uh, bring together your API specifications. So uh, this is essentially a Swagger designer where you will be able to collaborate, you will design your Swagger. You will also be able to define various other specifications like a GraphQL uh, specification or a OAS 3.0 specification, etc. Yeah, so just for uh, uh, you know ease of um, uh, our time, I've already created one here. So you can go inside. You will be able to see you know uh, basic features of this. You will be able to edit, and you will be able to see what are the various resources that are already uh, available. So these are the resources that are available now. Pet store, as you know, is the standard, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's like the hello world of uh, API space, yeah? So I have imported that. So for the first method, you will be able to study which are the methods that are available, yeah? So I'm allowing put and post. So as we go along, we might be able to add delete onto this. We might be able to add a new qu a query parameter onto this. Yeah, so typically query parameter works with a get call. But just for the sake of argument, I'm going to add a new query parameter. It might be something like a breed. So query parameter here is for the purpose of filtering. So I have added a new query, query parameter breed. Yeah, so, and of course I can move along. I can study what are the various other items. Yeah, path parameter, for example, pet ID is mentioned here. If you want to mention new query parameter, you will be able to mention here. All of this is going to be in a collaborative environment where multiple parties will be able to play with the simple, uh, the single API designer. So uh, at the time when uh, this design is happening, there is also a facility to view live documentation. So you have done some design change, you will be able to immediately see them here. Yeah, you might be, if you have specified a backend, then you will be able to try it out as well. In this case, I haven't specified a backend, so I'm going to skip that part. Uh, as I showed before, you will be also able to generate code snippets, which will assist in your uh, further development activity. Now, let's go back. So here, the API uh, uh, design part has been completed. Now we can go back. Uh, go back to the initial specification and you will be able to even launch a sandbox. Yeah, so let us launch a sandbox here. Pet store, let's call it version 5.4. So I'm going to proceed. So what is happening here is that the swagger definition has been created. Once the swagger definition is created, we will be able to take the swagger definition 
be able to send it to our sandbox. Yeah? And the sandbox will be able to create you uh, 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 a request and response schema for everything that you have created so far. Yeah. So this is again uh, going into a backend. So we have got an API layer for accepting your incoming request. We have got a backend layer, a database layer, where all the business logic is going to reside. I'll be able to, I'll be showing you how uh, you'll be able to edit various requests and response patterns as we go along. So, um, this is taking some time to create the sandbox. It's going to come in a minute. Stay with me. Now, the important point of our sandbox is that it is fully customizable. So, once the sandbox is created, you will be able to log in into the sandbox and you will be able to study the various requests and response. You will also be able to add in various business rules onto our sandbox. Yeah, so, there are various strategies that we are presenting in our sandbox. Now, the sandbox is created. Yeah, so, the uh, swagger has been rendered. Now, you can see that this is the sandbox. It's certainly not the uh, pet, pet store uh, server, right? So, this is our digital API calf server. Now, let us see what the sandbox is going to look like. Now, what I've created just now is the pet store 50 sandbox. Now, we'll be able to see what data is residing within it by logging into the sandbox UI. So here is the pet store 50. So we go inside that, we can edit the seed data. So uh, uh, what do I mean by editing a seed data? Is that uh, you will be able to provide sample request and response uh, every time so that you, know, you will have a more personalized experience for the APIs that are being designed. And here you go. So uh, you know, most of the API virtualization solution only provide the static response. We are able to provide dynamic response. We are, you know, you will be able to set various rules uh, with which the response has to come back. We are also able to provide, you know, canned response. Canned response essentially is the response that you specify within the Swagger. Uh, so we also have a facility where, you know, uh, certain certain times our customer asked, can we, uh, you know, uh, once everything is done, can we go to the backend through the solution? Certainly we can. Right, so you can even see the response payload here. You will be able to make changes onto that. This will be persisted onto our backend. So next time when you are trying out this uh, sandbox, you will be seeing this response. Now this is essentially an admin activity. Yeah, so an admin will be logging in, creating the data, changing the data, etc. Here. So uh, and uh, yeah, so I guess uh, with that. I have pretty much come to the end of my presentation. All right, guys, so thank you everyone for your time today.